And you are on uh, the platform. Um, and look, I, because my algorithm looks a certain way, because, and you know that we've got an aviation nut here on the platform. We've got Paul Brennan, whose mission is to bring uh, examples of planes throw, uh, flown by our national carrier in New Zealand or NAC before that and put them in a museum in Wanaka. So Paul is a plane nut, amongst other things. Um, and I am too. I, I think aviation and particularly historic uh, aviation and military aviation is something that many men, and perhaps as you get older, get really, really interested uh, in. And as a result, my... Um, my feeds on social media often um, feature um, and model aircraft, anything but military aircraft. Um, for that reason, of course, I, with many other people, was uh, very quickly aware of a tragedy in Dallas in the last couple of days at a Wings Over Dallas air show where an Air Cobra, um, World War II, a World War II, I think, fighter and a B-17, restored Boeing B-17, uh, Flying Fortress collided at this air show tragically with the loss of six lives. Um, what and, and I'm always slightly fascinated because I know the people who get involved in vintage aviation and aircraft restoration, um, they're not jocks. They are people who are very professional about what they do and generally very experienced aviators and engineers and they take what they do and they take safety very seriously. It is always therefore shocking when you see at an event that is uh, meant to be a celebration of aviation when you see something like this happen. Um, so I thought for some perspective on this, and it's an indulgence on my part, I will admit, we would uh, have a talk about that uh, Dallas uh, air show disaster. And to do so, we are hooking up with uh, Juan, is it Juan, Juan Brown? That's correct. And that's right. Ryan Brown, who is an aviation enthusiast, a uh, US-based pilot, and he runs a YouTube channel, uh, which features aviation. I've probably seen his stuff, to be honest. Um, Ryan, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, firstly, the, pic uh, the pictures are... They're bloody sad and they're tragic as you watch this thing unfold almost in slow motion. Uh, on my on my phone on the Facebook. Yeah, there was a lot of video capture of the uh, of the event, so there's a lot of data for investigators to go off of based on all the video that was captured of the event. Plus, we also have the technology of capturing the ADSB data as well, so we can see pretty quickly the ground track and the ground speeds and the altitudes of the aircraft involved. Yeah. It always amazes me at air shows. And actually, you've just explained something to me. Why do there seem to be so many crashes at air shows? I guess because there's so much footage of crashes at air shows because people are taking footage of what happens at air shows. So it may give us a perception that they're incredibly dangerous where really they're not. It's just that we see more of them. That's correct. We do see more of them, but they can be... Low-level aerobatics or low-level aerial displays are do have some inherent dangers in, built into them. All right. Well, I would have thought that super-controlled airspace, everything is perfectly coordinated. And whilst I'm not asking you to pass judgment, something clearly went wrong. One, some, one or two of these planes was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right, and we're trying to sort that out right now. And um, what what's becoming pretty clear is that it's pretty clear that the pilot of the P-63 King Cobra did not see the B-17 bomber. I know the B-17 is a much bigger aircraft, but the P-63 does have reduced visibility out of the cockpit of the aircraft. But something in the organizational design of this particular parade put those two aircraft in a position where the B-17 ended up directly in the blind spot of the P-63 King Cobra. These World War II aircraft have long noses. In the, in the case of the King Cobra, that's where the cannon goes, the 37-millimeter cannon, the P-51, that's their long engines. You cannot see very well over the nose of these aircraft. So if you have an aircraft directly in front of you but below you, you can't see it. Okay, and he's so in a bank in the, in the, and he's turning around. He can't look under through the floor of his aircraft. And the B-17 appears to be just on a, on a, a direct tra trajectory 
not deviating? Correct. And so investigators are going to have to figure out whose line, who was on the correct line, and what was the plan for the lines. Normally when these events are choreographed in front of the crowd, of course, as you know, there's a deadline that none of the aircraft can cross so that they don't get too close to the crowd. And then usually you draw a couple of lines out in front of the deadline and you have the bombers fly one particular line and then 200 to 500 feet over, you should have the fighter aircraft flying that line. Was there a confusion in those lines? What was in the briefing, the pre-briefing, but what was the plan, in other words, before all this? These are very carefully choreographed events, choreographed months before the event takes place. And then uh, it's the job of a person called the air boss that, that comes up with this choreography and then um, executes it. Yeah. But it's all pre-briefed beforehand. Juan, what do we know about those who lost their lives? I presume all enthusiasts, all experienced aviators. Yes, all very experienced aviators. They all had the correct credentials. Uh, two of them were good friends of mine, oh, pilots wow. uh, that I've worked with before at work. One of them was one of my uh, Czech airmen at work, uh, an instructor pilot. Um, and they all had the correct credentials and experience um, for for those flights. That that, that for example, uh, Len and the pilots of the B seventeen. That's their airplane. They've been flying that airplane for years. Wow. Same with the P sixty three pilot. He has been flying that airplane for many years, and they've been doing this this parade flight uh, for many years. So, was there anything changed about this particular parade? or the choreography of this parade that put these two aircraft in this position, or was it simply a loss of situational awareness on behalf of the P-63 pilot? We don't know yet. Mm. Uh, one, I'm sorry for your personal loss. I, I wasn't aware that you, that you personally knew some of those involved. Um, so yeah, we lose their, small... you know, we lose this experience, and, and I guess we lose two aircraft that are part of history. Was this a, a restored wartime B-17 that, that went down, or was it a, a, a reconstruction or, or a replica? No, no, it was a, both of them were um, original aircraft, and um, I think we're down to maybe three flying B-17s left in the States, and that was probably the only uh, P-63 King Cobra aircraft, I believe, uh, left. There may be one more left in the, in the world today. Mm. Well, is it the NTSB that investigates in the States? I imagine they are all over this. This investigation is well underway. That's correct. Yeah. And it'll take them a good uh, year, year and a half to, uh, to make the final report on this. But we should get a preliminary report, I would hope. Well, a very preliminary report in a matter of weeks and then a, uh, a summary of facts known probably within a year or so. Mm. But it'll take upwards of a year and a half to two years to come up with the final very detailed um, report of this accident. Meantime, of course, air shows, I imagine, will go on because they're incredibly popular events. i got to say I enjoy uh, going to them. They are exciting. Um, they're almost emotional events, and aviation is an incredibly uh, romantic and appealing uh, uh, pastime or, or, or interest. Do you ever Correct, wonder, yeah. one, whether or not, though, there is too much risk associated with air shows like this. Is there any questioning of this format and this form of entertainment? There, uh, the shows will go on. There is definite uh, scrutiny of of the of this particular parade flight, and this is what the investigators will find out. Was there something different about this parade flight choreography that made it more hazardous than in previous parades? So. There will be very hard lessons learned from this this tragedy in Dallas. All right, and, but and the show, the air shows will go on. That's correct. Mm. Well, and I thank you very much for your time. I am sorry for your life. Thank you for your, uh, for your loss. Thank you for your expertise. And we will talk to you again, uh, I would hope, at some stage in the future under happier circumstances. Very good, Sean. You've got a couple of shows coming up there in New Zealand, and and they're yeah. going to be fantastic. Oh, now, events. which ones are you talking about? And interested in? Uh, well, well, well I, got, I, I see here. Yeah, well, you got that one. Warbirds on parade on Sunday, December fourth of yeah. uh, twenty-two. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. That, is that in Auckland? Yeah. Yeah, I think that is. And yeah. we've got the one, oh, the Hood Aerodome, uh, which is close uh, by us. Uh, you should get down under. That Warbirds over Wanaka in particular is an awesome show in a very, very yeah, dramatic you got, setting. you got some very incredible uh, aircraft down there that we don't even see up here in the States. All right. Hey, Juan, good talking to you. Thank you very much. That is Juan Brown, aviation uh, enthusiast, expert. He's got his own YouTube channel that people watch planes on. I'm going to go and check it out today because plane nerd. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Plane nerd, not to the level that Paul Brennan is a plane nerd. I'm played, plain nerd adjacent, I think would be uh, what I call myself. Have you been to an air show and do you enjoy them? Um, always sad when something like that happens. Uh, four people on the B-17 on the Flying Fortress, one in the Air Cobra. Uh, sorry, sorry, five on the, on the B-17, six people dead. Um, just terrible.